Welcome to The Body Nerd Show, empowering you with the super uncomplicated things you need to know about self-care and movement so that you too can wake up every day pain-free. I'm your host, Alexandra Ellis, and I'm a coach, writer, former yogi, kettlebell devotee, and 100% body nerd. So, are you ready? Let's get nerdy! Welcome back. You're listening to episode 18 of The Body Nerd Show. On today's episode, we're talking about aging. Because yeah, getting older is unavoidable, but feeling old is not a guarantee. Because how you feel right now has everything to do with what you're doing and how much you're moving, and really honestly, not that much to do with how old you are. We'll talk about what actually happens to your body as you age because yes, things change, but again, how you move and what you're doing has way more to do with how you feel. And I'll also share some ideas on how to get started, even if it's been a while since you've done anything. And whether that's just because you've fallen out of routine or maybe you're dealing with some aches or pains, doesn't matter, we'll get you started. Just a reminder that show notes and all of the links live over at aewellness.com slash podcast. Over there, you can find my Instagram. It's at Hala for Mala. And you can also find more information on Movement Mavens, our membership community that gives you the plan, the tools, and the help to get stronger, more flexible, and feel amazing every day. You can find latest blog posts. And actually, the one as I'm recording this is Getting Older Doesn't Have to Suck which is totally true. (laughs) There's also an option for a free download with nine things to soothe yourself when you're in pain and the link to join the totally free and totally fun Body Nerds Facebook group. So with all that in mind, why is this on my radar to talk about? If I had a penny every time someone told me or started a sentence with, well, now that I'm older, or it's so much harder now that I'm older, honestly, I would be super rich by now. I think we use age as an excuse for how we sleep or even how not so great we're sleeping or how our body feels or what our day-to-day looks like. We allow aging to dictate pretty much everything. And I'm going to tell you now that how I feel right this moment at 31 years of age is a million times better than I felt when I was 18 or 19 or even 16 because I had so many darn sprained ankles playing soccer. I think back of a story and discussion or conversation, we'll say, I had with a neighbor probably 15 years ago. Um, She was asking about what I was studying at university, and I told her I was studying exercise biology. And I just so remember her saying, well, it's a good thing that you're doing that now because when you're older, you won't be able to. And to be honest, it kind of pissed me off because I think that this is an accepted idea that our age means we have to slow down And we are having to accept that, you know, not feeling awesome is just par for the course. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And I know that because there are women inside Movement Mavens who are making steps towards feeling better every single day. So you can't tell me that just because you're older means you have to feel like you're older. They're not related. And they're definitely not as closely related as we think. Your body isn't falling apart because you're older. And I know that might be a bummer if you're like, wait, but I feel like I'm a thousand years old and I'm only 38 or whatever that number is. How you feel right now has so much more to do with how much you're moving. And not only how much you're moving, but the ways in which you are moving. You might feel weak because you're not working consistently on strength. And that doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym and throw a kettlebell around. Even something as simple as taking two stairs at a time can work on building strength. Or getting up and down off the floor without using your hands can build your strength. And maybe you're feeling inflexible, not because you're another year older, but because you're not stretching. Your body is a sum total of all of the things that you have done in the last seven days, we'll say. 
And so if in the last seven days you've been doing a lot more of nothing or a lot more sitting or even if it that's a lot more of walking and moving and doing a ton of stuff, that's going to have more effect and more pull on how you feel right now than how many times you've been around the sun. And I think we also get into this place where we feel like, oh my gosh, it's got to be so complicated, right? Oh, I don't have a degree. I don't know about training. I don't have the equipment. You can build strength with your body. You can build strength doing things that you do already and just doing them with a little bit more attention and awareness, It doesn't have to be super complicated, and it also doesn't have to take three hours a day. I was just talking with a client today about working on building up her foot strength and helping to restore the arches in her feet. Uh, We were talking about footwear, and she was saying, oh, I just, you know, I have to buy these $120 shoes that have these special orthotics, and I just would be really nice to just be able to buy a pair of shoes and not worry about it. And so we talked about ways to build foot strength with what she was already doing, adding in barefoot training, which really truly is just being barefoot more often, and also working on balance work while she's brushing her teeth. That's something you do every day anyways, so why not do it barefoot and double up the benefit? When you keep it simple, a lot of that has to do with just pairing things together or layering things on. And I think that's part of my overachiever (laughs) side to my personality and that I can't possibly do one thing at a time. Um, But if that resonates with you, because I mean, let's face it, we're all super busy. So pairing things that make sense together can help you get stronger, work on flexibility, even when you're doing something like brushing your teeth. Unfortunately, I had to tell my client that the barefoot shoes are just as expensive as those other ones, which is so frustrating, right? It's less material. Why do they charge us more? I just, I don't understand. So if getting stronger and more flexible doesn't have to be complicated, what actually is happening when you age? Because it's true. Your body is changing. My body is changing. It happens. There's actually a loss of elasticity because of changes in the structure to the elastic fibers. So you are feeling stiffer because the collagen synthesis is slowing down as we age, which is pretty interesting. But again, remember that your body is constantly remodeling based on what you did previously. So if you're moving consistently in a little bit every day now, that's the level that your body is going to maintain. And you can almost build up like a savings account of movement so that if you take a weekend off or something happens and you have to take a few days off, you're not set back. So yes, collagen synthesis slows down as we age, but that doesn't mean that you have to stop moving or you have to slow down or everything has to be harder. Where we really get into trouble is when we alter our day and we change how we approach things just because of our age. Why not problem solve? Why not figure out a way to make it easier to put your shoes and socks on in the morning instead of just saying, well, now my hip hurts all the time. I guess I'll only wear sandals, which is things that people tell me. It happens. So instead of accommodating our age, why don't we spend more time thinking about how to get outside and play and have freedom and move with ease in our bodies. That sounds way more interesting to me. Now, as I was preparing my notes for this episode, I found something really interesting um, about fascia and what happens. And it's something called advanced glycation end products or age for short, which I thought was pretty clever. And as I started reading about this, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening when we age. This is going to be groundbreaking, Um, but it gets a little bit more interesting. So what are these advanced glycation end products? Um, They are unwanted reactions between sugar and proteins. And this accumulation of these glycation end products can build up on the collagen and specifically the elastin and it happens in your skin too so some of the skin aging and the loss of skin structure that happens as we age is because of this buildup of these glycation end products it also sensitizes the skin to uv radiation 
and enhances photo aging, which as a fair complexion person is a massive bummer. But when it comes to movement, the really interesting thing is that your tendons become more stiff because of this buildup of these glycation end products, and then they're less able to adapt to changes in load. So it just takes a little bit more, a little bit slower approach to build up the strength of a tendon or connective tissue in your body. Now, when I read that, I was just like, oh my goodness. I didn't know that. This is like everything to do with, you know, how we feel when we age. So let me learn more about what these glycation end products are. And so I went to my good friend, Google. Honestly, if you haven't met her, she's amazing. And I found out that glycation end products and actually glycation itself is the process of browning your food. They form in your body and they already exist in foods. And so if you cook at all, you know that the brown, delicious yumminess on food is what makes it taste delicious. So yeah, you could stop cooking your food and only have soups and stews and only slow cook from now until eternity. But brown food tastes delicious, right? So, like a fried crispy egg to me is just mm, so good. So what do you do? right? If we don't want to become slow cooker only families, which would be fine, like the slow cooker and the instant pot are amazing. But I'm sorry, brown food just tastes even better because you get that crisp, you get that flavor, it adds depth to the food. It's just, it's so good. And here's the thing too, you have antioxidants and enzymes in your body to deal with it. So should we be freaking out about advanced glycation end products? No, we shouldn't. The best news is that regular movement and activity have been shown to reduce these glycation end products in the body. And just make sure you're getting a balanced diet, that you're drinking enough water and you're eating enough vegetables to even it all out. So enjoy your food. You can cook it, but also have some raw vegetables, which I think takes us all back to this idea of variability, which I talk about all the time, that variability in life is a good thing. You can't have Snickers every single day and then a salad on Sunday and expect the vegetables in Sunday's salad to offset all the lack of nutrients from Snickers every day. It doesn't work that way. And we understand that when it comes to nutrition, especially in an extreme example like that. So this is no different. Eat a balanced diet, drink a lot of water, move your body in all of the ways, and you're going to be fine. It's really as simple as that. Sure, we can't pretend that we're 20 anymore, and that's fine. But be slow and deliberate and make sure that you're moving every single day, whether it's as basic as a couple of walks a day, maybe even just one long walk, but that you're also doing a variety of movements. So if you love yoga, cool, cool go do yoga, but also do some strength training. Also do some strenuous walking, like hiking or something like that. Just make sure you're getting a variety of movements for your body. You're nourishing your body with a variety of nutrients and just taste the rainbow. (laughs) I think that's such a great slogan because it's so true. Um, And that to me just means, you know, all the variability and variety that you possibly can get in all of the ways. And I'm the first to admit that having a routine makes everything way easier, but with what we eat and how we move, taste the rainbow, go for it all. That should give us a good starting point on how to kick aging to the curb. And if I see you and you tell me, well, now that I'm older, um, I might, I don't want to say punch you in the face because that's really mean, but I'm going to be sad. I don't want to be sad, okay? So here's to asking better questions, moving more, getting nerdy, tasting the rainbow, moving a lot, and eating all your vegetables and drinking water. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a future episode. And even better, you can head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review pretty, pretty please. It helps other body nerds find the show and it lets Apple know that we dig it. Also, I want to hear your self-care hack. So how do you 
taste the rainbow. All of a sudden, that has become my repeating phrase. So if you're sick of it, I want to know too. <laughs> Leave me a quick message over at 818-396-6501 and tell me what you like to do on the daily to feel amazing. I'll put that number in the show notes as well. And come find me on Instagram. I'm at Holla from Holla. Uh, tag me in those IG stories. Seriously, love those. They're so much fun. And if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, my stories are filled with uh, a little bit of food um, and my dog, a lot of dog stuff, and then rants every once in a while. But I love seeing body nerds being nerdy out in the world. So together, we can spread the word that your body is super cool and you can 100% change the unchangeable. I'll talk to you next week. Life without pain is possible. And if you're ready to break up with all the things that are only giving you temporary relief, I've got just the thing. Head on over to bodynerdshow.com to download a checklist with nine simple things to soothe yourself when you're in pain. It doesn't have to be complicated and it won't take you more than 15 minutes a day.